Cyber, also known as Syringe, is one of the most prolific members of the trap metal community. Some would even consider him to be the first of the genre. You could call him a SoundCloud OG, but the fact is, his music even predates SoundCloud. He's created a sound and career blueprint that many have followed, and just like Bones can be classified as your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. But despite all that, he's never hit that mainstream level, or even risen to the top of the underground with people like Zillikami and Josiah. Instead, he stayed in the shadows, being mostly forgotten besides people who are truly tuned in. And well, if you're on this channel, it means you want to be tuned in, so let's look into the life story of Cyber. Chase MacArthur Cothian was born September 6, 1996, weirdly enough the exact same day as Lil Xan, in Maryland, Washington. He was born to a religious mother and he was forced to go to church every Sunday because of this. The teachings didn't really stick with him though, because at the age of 7 he was already questioning his faith. Which goes to show that even at a young age he was a very mindful kid, which would come back to bite him in the butt in middle school because he kind of stuck out. He was always on his own, he stayed quiet, and this led bullies to pick on him more than normal. He was seen as the weird kid in the outcast but all he wanted to do was just create art and just kind of stay on his own because he didn't fuck with other people's energy like that in this time he would spend alone he watched a lot of youtube videos getting inspired by creators to create his own art but at the time he didn't know what he wanted to create this would all change at the age of 12 when his cousin kid beats would introduce him to fl studio using the melodies he had in his head throughout his entire life he would start to create beats going by the name mcavy at the time he dropped a whole project called space trips on youtube but unfortunately he would later privatize all of his early work because he wasn't proud of it anymore he would eventually begin to rap over these beats, being inspired by people like Gucci Mane and other trap artists, but it was Waka Flocka who really made an impact on him, showing him a side to music he had never seen before. Taking all the rage he had built up inside of him from being bullied for so long, he would begin to scream on his beats. Keep in mind, trap metal didn't really exist as a genre back then. He was just doing what he thought was cool, and he wasn't really hopping on a bandwagon like a lot of artists like to do nowadays. He was just making stuff that he thought sounded good, and that's always the way you want to go when making music. It really started to pay off, because after a few months, he began to gain a very small fan base on YouTube and another music sharing website called SoundClip. But of course, his bullies also noticed this, and being threatened by his success, they began harassing him even worse, making his school life a living hell. As time went on, making music was all Syringe wanted to do, rushing home right after class to do just that, pushing his homework to the side and letting his grades drop considerably. His high school experience was equally as depressing and uneventful for him. The only notable moment was when he met his friend, Leon Wolf, who he would later go on to create music with. After high school, Cyber's parents suspected him to go to college and pursue higher education. He instead wanted to pursue music full time against their better wishes, but luckily they were still supportive and let him stay in the house for an extra year. Having a lot of support on SoundClick and having a good connections in the industry, he had a good running start to make his way into music. By connections, I don't mean people at labels or any managers or things like that. He just knew a lot of other kids who worked in the same field and made the same type of music as him, so he was able to get a lot of collabs. In the year after high school, he stayed at his mom's house working away at music until he was able to make enough money to move out on his own. He dropped his mixtape back to the BS at the end of the year and immediately after set out on his own. In 2013, he would form his collective Weird Clam with his cousin Kid Beats, Leon Wolf, Ghostly, and Miklo. His group would grow to include over 20 rappers from the local area as well as people he met online, eventually rebranding itself to Anti World in 2016. They would drop a group project under the same name later that year as well as Cyber dropping two solo projects named Tales of a Rieger and Fatigue Fleet. So editing note here, I forgot to mention Cyber also dropped three LPs the same year called Rinjago. Deathhead and Hellhorse, so just thought I'd mention that. The reviews on these earlier projects aren't the best, but it seems around 2017, Cyber really started to come to his own, perfecting his style. This is also the same year that Trap Metal really started to take off with acts like City Morgue and Josiah. I think it's fair to say that the reviews are so bad on his earlier projects because the general audience didn't really understand Trap Metal until it started to become more widespread. Once they understood it, they started to like it. This is also around the same time he began to do shows in Denver and New York. It seems like everything was going in the right direction for him, but by the end of the year, things took a dark turn when Cyber's friends and family started to put out the word that he was actually missing. Fans feared the worst considering some prior Periscope streams that he had where he seemed like he was strung out and clearly going through a manic episode. This is Captain Morgan shit we're doing. It's not fucking Skrillex, nigga. It's Laura Lush and Dylan Brady. A hundred guests. Створена з класичного та карамельного солоду. Нове пиво, золота бочка розливне. Дарує вам за... 
out, but luckily he would show back up. It turns out that Cyber hadn't slept in days and was smoking tons of weed in a manic state. He ended up dipping his joint in some Vicks, which if you don't know what that is, it's something you rub on your chest when you're sick to try to open up your airwaves, and after he smoked that, he went into full-on psychosis. He ended up destroying his hotel room before walking outside half naked and proceeding down the street. This is where police caught up to him and attempted to reason with him. He didn't want to comply though and instead tried to run away, leading them to tase him and take him to a mental hospital. He ended up spending the entire month of June in intensive care. The entire time that he was in there, none of his friends or family had any idea where he was, leading them to panic and post about it on social media. Eventually, he got in contact with his mom and after another two weeks of psychiatric test, he was allowed to go free. He finally came home, he was no longer syringe. He was now Cyber, a much more melodic type of rapper, not too dissimilar from the change that Flocko or Josiah went through. A lot of fans didn't like this change of style, but Cyber made sure to let them know it was here to stay. He spent the rest of the year of 2017 in Chicago, clearing his head, working on music, and taking antipsychotics. He would eventually move there full time in hopes of making more connections, and by 2018, he would appear on the Mask Gorilla podcast. He ended up dropping three more projects, starting to morph into his new sound and showing fans what he was really about. They were hesitant to get on board at first, but after a while of listening to it, they started to like it a lot more. With his head finally in the right place, he would begin to focus on music full time, dropping three whole projects in 2019, as well as appearing on Josiah's first ever album as a feature. In 2020, he went on tour with both Snot and Josiah, and the whole time he was building his rap career, he was also making beats under the name Landfill. Knowing that despite being a talented rapper, he was also a very talented beat maker. Fortunately, this era of peace for Cyber was ended when he started to have a bit of an issue with a rapper named Zillikami, which you may or may not have heard of before. That's right, boys, we got another beef of Zillikami right here. No, but really, there wasn't a whole lot to it. It basically came down to the fact that Zilla made a song called Bacock on a Cyber beat, and it turns out that Cyber also made a song with the same beat called Young Emperor. He would take to Twitter to claim that Zilla didn't pay for the beat, and then Zilla would respond soon after claiming he did pay for the beat, and he was only going to release the song on SoundCloud for no profit. Because in Zilla's own words, he was a big fan of Cyber and just wanted to have fun making a track on a beat from a rapper he really looked up to. More issues would come when Zilla previewed another song on his Instagram Live that fans dubbed Bloody Benz. Cyber would once again claim Zilla didn't pay for this beat either, which didn't hold much water considering it was posted for free on YouTube, but either way, Zilla changed the beat and released the song in 2021, renaming it to Chains. Cyber also had a little issue with XXXTentacion, writing a blog post about how he didn't mess with him. He also released a song called Shoot At Me, thought to be a diss track aimed at X, but it was later debunked that it was that at all. That's basically the end of the concrete beef that we know about, but fans would speculate that there was actually a second diss track aimed at X named A, which was meant to mock how many times X would say A throughout his songs. But Cyber explained in his Mask Gorilla podcast appearance the track was actually made to make fun of the Suicide Boys, and this came out before X passed away, so this isn't him trying to rewrite history or anything, this is something he said when they were both still alive. Although there is a third piece of evidence people point out when saying X and Syringe have beef. It's a supposed leaked phone call between the two, although it later came out that the person on the other end of the call wasn't Cyber at all, and was instead one of X's producers. Nah nigga, nah nigga, you a hoe, you a hoe, you a bitch! You not fake it, nigga! You a bitch! You the same nigga that wear fucking paint on your nail and go to school in fucking skinny jeans, nigga! The fucking cowboy boots, nigga! The fuck, nigga! Boy, boy, nigga, shut the fuck up! Shut that whole ass shit up, nigga! Cause real deal, real deal, nigga, me and you not from the same hood, nigga! I'll slap the fuck out you, boy! The fuck, nigga! Tell me I'm not these niggas! First of all, when I get there, when I get there, and I have to beat the fuck out you, and the final claim by fans is that X actually had a diss song aimed at Cyber called No Syringe, but as of 2023, the song has never surfaced. I'm not saying they didn't have beef, but most of this evidence has been debunked. Throughout the next few years, Cyber would drop one new mixtape a year, a group project called Anti-World 2 in 2021, another project in 2022 called YNL, and a third one in 2023 called Reflections Before a Daybreak. Each of these projects have very different tones and sounds, and as the years went on, Cyber just continued to change his style, work on his sound, and build his business. And while he still never managed to go mainstream, he definitely has left a big impact on the hip hop landscape. He even inspired people like Trippy Red, and just like Bones or Black Cray, he's never been at the forefront, but he's always been there starting the trends that many of your favorite artists follow to this day. So big shout out to him, make sure to check out his music, I listened to a bunch of it for this video, and it's fire. Promise you, you'll never be bored. It's all different, it's all unique, and it's definitely a different sound than the mainstream bullshit you listen to nowadays. Besides that, thank you guys so much for watching, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, leave a knife emoji in the comments below and tell me your favorite syringe song or cyber or many of the other names that he's gone under and if you want to be really cool you can also subscribe because i'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers and if you could help me with that i would really appreciate it but besides that just thank you guys so much for watching talk to you next time oh yeah follow me on instagram and join my discord server bye